Hello everyone and welcome back to the Transair Flight Equipment YouTube channel. Today we're going to have a uh, quick video on how to set up your Sky Echo. So you've got the unit switched on and you're connected to the Wi-Fi. So first things first, head over to your browser and put in the following IP address. 192.168.4.1 and that will bring up the main configuration page for the Sky Echo. On the main landing page you will see the current status of the unit, uh, the IKO uh, aircraft address, the call sign and also the stats on the uh, current GPS fix uh, and your lat and long. Um, you will also see the Wi-Fi version and ADS-B version at the top and the update buttons next to those so if you do need to update your software um, that is where it's done from. Uh, underneath that you'll see Sky Echo setup and Wi-Fi settings. So to go and get your aircraft entered into the unit, you want to go and hit Sky Echo setup. Once you've hit uh, the Sky Echo setup, you'll be taken to the configuration page with uh, an array of different options. Uh, first option on the left is the 1090 ES transmit and simply that is the transmit function of the Sky Echo and that can either be enabled or disabled from there uh, depending on whether you have the mode S transponder already. The next box down is the IKO aircraft address which is the hex code. Um, you can find this quite simply uh, by going on to Gmfo. If you pop in your reg um, and then have a look at the hex address and that's uh, simply a six digit code um, that is programmed into your transponder normally um, and that's a unique uh, address for your aircraft. So go ahead and pop that uh, in there. The next box down is the emitter category. This is defaulted to light which is uh, for an aeroplane less than 15 and a half thousand pounds maximum takeoff weight including uh, light sports aircraft and there are a number of other options uh, for gliders, rotorcraft uh, and many more. The next box down that's labelled ADS-B in capability uh, is actually in reference to ground stations providing TIS-B functionality. Um, so any selection here uh, in the UK isn't actually uh, applicable as TIS-B isn't currently available. Uh, so no need to check that box. The next two boxes are quite self-explanatory. We have aircraft length in metres and lateral GPS offset. So go ahead and enter those for your aircraft. Next up we have the SDA which stands for System Design Assurance. Uh, this is set to 1 as default. If we now come to the top right hand side of the screen we see receiver mode. The Sky Echo unit contains dual receivers. The primary receiver is permanently configured for 1090 ADS-B uh, but the secondary receiver can be configured for either 978 UAT or FLAM. Uh, if you want to select FLAM, uh, you will need a separate subscription to Skydemon. Uh, essentially, the unit will receive encrypted FLAM data and transmit that to the uh, EFB of choice, uh, but then the EFB functionality uh, will decrypt that um, and display that, but there is a separate license required for that. So next up, we have the call sign, self-explanatory. Just uh, pop your aircraft call sign in there without the dash. The next setting down is the own ship filter. Uh, if you have either an ES uh, enabled mode S transponder fitted already, uh, or you are using the transmit function of the Sky Echo 2, if you select ADSB own ship filter, uh, this will stop your EFB from self alarming or displaying a ghost of your own aircraft. Um, likewise, if you do have a FLAM uh, emitting device from your aeroplane, uh, selecting filter FLAM will have that same effect and stop a ghost from being displayed. Next up we have the uh, box labelled VSO, brackets knots. Uh, this is obviously the stall speed in landing config. Uh, that needs to be entered so that the Sky Echo can automatically switch between airborne and ground modes. The final two boxes are once again quite self-explanatory. Uh, aircraft width in metres and the longitudinal GPS offset in metres. So once you've gone and entered those, uh, go ahead and hit apply and that will load the configuration into the Sky Echo. And if we now come back to the main page, uh, we will see there that all of our information is now entered and displaying. Uh, so we should now see our hex address, call sign, and that's all there, and we are ready to go.